remains one of the most closely watched and highly anticipated economic reports for everyone. It's a monthly report that shows where we are with inflation. This past Thursday, a consumer price index for September was officially released, and our financial expert, Mark Gravicheski, joins us now live. And Mark, that report showed us some pretty bad news. Uh, good morning to you, David. I, I wish we, we had better news to report on the inflation front, but uh, you know, unfortunately, in September, consumer prices did rise another 0.4%. Uh, now, the national rate of inflation, David, did decline from 8.3 down to 8.2%. But uh, but that means that consumer prices, on average, are, are still 8.2% higher uh, than they were 12 months ago. And to have that high, high of an inflation rate, uh, 19 months into this inflationary cycle, takes a punishing toll on consumers. And when you look at what's called core inflation, David, which which strips out the more volatile and seasonal food and energy prices and and often provides a more stable trend and outlook on where inflation is going, core inflation in September surged to a new 40 year high. So uh, to kind of summarize, inflation is still running much, much hotter than expected. And as I've been arguing, unfortunately, is likely to remain historically high for the next couple of years. Yeah, and over the past three months, we've seen inflation decline slightly, 9.1% in June to its current rate of 8.2. That may sound like a big deal, but really, when we go to the store, we're not seeing much of a difference. And you argue, as you were just mentioning, that we could maybe see another upward spike of inflation within the next few months. Why is that? Look, the main contributor behind this this three month decline in inflation we've seen again from 9.1 in June down to its current level of 8.2 percent has been a drop in global crude oil prices. Uh, but on October 5th, literally just a couple of weeks ago, David, Russia and OPEC, which combined for roughly 40 percent of the world's crude oil production, uh, Russia and OPEC agreed to reduce their production by a hefty 2 million barrels per day. And this production cut combined with, uh, you know, reduced uh, production by America and the ongoing disruptions uh, caused by Russia's invasion of Ukraine is expected to, to further strain uh, uh, global crude oil supplies and send crude oil prices higher. You know, two weeks ago, David, a barrel of U.S. crude oil was trading around, you know, $75, $76. On Friday, it closed at $90, uh, $95, uh, I'm sorry, $85, and Wall Street is expecting it to rise to $100 a barrel by the end of the year. And those higher crude oil prices, David, translate to, uh, to higher consumer costs, higher manufacturing costs, higher shipping and transportation costs, all of which I, I, I think drives inflation higher in the upcoming months. Just full of bad news today, Mark. And as we get closer to the winter season, and you know, you got the holidays, buying gifts for loved ones, but also energy, paying for our heating bills. How is all this going to impact that? Well, you're right. Things are getting a little bit colder here. You know, on Wednesday, look, the U.S. Energy Information Administration uh, released its, its latest winter energy outlook, which predicts that the average home heating bill. Uh, here across the United States this winter will be 28% higher than last year. Uh, and, and it cited this, this surging energy costs we've been seeing over the past few weeks and, and a slightly you know colder winter. Now, we'll, we'll see if Andrew can work some of his magic to keep things from getting a bit too cold this winter. Uh, but this 28% is just an average and your heating bill is ultimately dependent on how you heat your home. Uh, and this graph here, you know, shows the top three sources of energy uh, used to heat consumer homes here in the U.S. And, and the number one source of heating uh, is natural gas, which is used to heat you know, about 46 percent uh, of all U.S. households year over year or over the last 12 months natural gas prices have risen over 33 uh, percent the second most popular source of home heating uh, is electricity which heats about 40 percent of all u.s homes over the last 12 months electricity prices david have risen by 15.5 percent and finally look at heating oil you know it only heats about four percent of all u.s households but heating oil over the last 12 months is up a massive 
58.1%. Uh, but again, if we start to see another energy crunch, David, like the one we saw, you know, late spring, you know, early summerish, uh, these home heating bills this winter could easily soar much, much higher. Oh, one of those covers for the thermostats definitely going to be needed this year. Yeah. All right, Mark, thank you so yeah. much, and we will see you next Monday.